Okay, welcome back everyone. In this next series of videos I'm going to talk in a little more detail about how we describe flow and deformation. And the reason for that is that a lot of the fluids or materials that you may encounter uh, are going to be non-Newtonian. And so there's certain language or certain terminology that's uh, used to talk about these kinds of flows and it's good to understand that. And as a starting point uh, you might recall Newton's law of viscosity. So from the previous uh, series of videos uh, I posed a, a simple flow uh, situation here for you that, that's shown here on the on the left hand side. There's a, a fluid that is in the gap between two plates uh, that are separated by a distance h. The lower plate or the lower surface is stationary and the upper surface is free to move and it moves in the x direction with some velocity v. And Newton's law of viscosity relates the stress, the shear stress that's acting on a surface with normal in the y direction due to this flow in the x direction, tau yx, is related to the velocity gradient, the rate of change of the x component of velocity with respect to y. And Newton's law of viscosity says that the stress and velocity gradients are related by this coefficient. Uh, which is called the viscosity coefficient. So if it's a Newtonian fluid, uh, then this uh, coefficient is a constant. Non-Newtonian fluids have uh, this coefficient not constant. It can vary uh, also with the, with the velocity gradient. And we'll, and we'll see that shortly uh, as we go along. Now if we talk about again uh, for this uh, scenario that I've shown here where if we can imagine that the gap between these plates is small, then we can express this derivative in terms of the change of velocity uh, over the change in y. So as y goes from 0 to h, the velocity goes from 0 to v. So I can express this as the coefficient of viscosity times v over h. Now it's pretty easy to see for this simple flow that I've drawn here that's driven by the shearing motion of this top surface with respect to stationary bottom surface, how this relationship between stress and velocity gradients is established. But in general, flows that we want to consider are not going to be this simple. The velocity gradients may vary uh, in complicated ways uh, in space. And so it's of interest to find some more general way to talk about the deformations associated with the fluid uh, in, in these different kinds of flows. And so to do that, let's consider uh, drawing kind of a box in this domain. And we're going to do that to represent some chunk or some element of fluid. And so that's shown here. So if we imagine just drawing a box or taking a, a chunk of fluid that's shaped like a, a square uh, out, of this, uh, out of this geometry and drawing here, so this is a height h, and then asking what happens to this box or this chunk of fluid when we uh, subject it to this flow for some time delta t. So what's going to happen, I think you can uh, imagine, if the box has this initial shape represented by the solid lines, it's going to deform. And it's going to deform such that these vertical surfaces are going to become oriented at some angle. Uh, right in this velocity field. That's pretty easy to imagine. So the left and right surfaces become deformed uh, to uh, these uh, angled lines, dashed lines, and then the top surface is displaced by some amount uh, associated with this, uh, with this velocity. The bottom surface remains stationary because remember we have the no-slip condition at the bottom. So again, the, the solid box represents the initial shape of this surface and then the, the dashed line represents how that shape would deform after some time uh, delta t associated with this, uh, with this shearing flow. So a question we can ask then is how can we express this deformation? How can we express how the shape changes from the cube or from the square in two dimensions to this uh, parallelogram shape? And so there's different quantities we could imagine uh, to describe this deformation. One particular quantity that's conventionally used is this angle. The angle between this vertical surface and its deformed orientation. 
and this angle we can represent by this Greek letter uh, lowercase gamma. There's many choices we can make to represent this deformation. This is just one choice. And I think we'll see here that there's some advantages uh, in terms of uh, simplicity, how we can uh, uh, represent uh, other quantities with respect to gamma. Uh, but for now, just notice that the tangent of gamma, right, a right triangle is formed uh, here between the initial state and this uh, deformed uh, left-hand surface. Uh, so the, the tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of gamma is delta x over h. And this displacement delta x, we can represent by the velocity times the time delta t. Distance is velocity times time. So therefore, I can express tangent of gamma as v delta t over h. Now, remember I said that this is a small gap. We're assuming things are small. So this distance is small. Uh, delta t is small. So we're going to talk about the limit of small deformations. And so if gamma is small, remember the tangent of some small angle uh, approaches the value of the angle. So for gamma small, tangent of gamma approaches gamma. So I can say that gamma equals v delta t over h. Now I have a way to represent this deformation in terms of parameters associated with the geometry and the flow field. So here I just uh, copied what was on the previous page. right? Gamma gives us a way to represent the deformation. And for this particular deformation that's associated with the shearing flow, which is driven by, again, the sliding of this top plate top surface with respect to a stationary bottom surface, often this is called the, the shear strain for this type of flow. Or gamma is called the strain in general, and we can call it the shear strain for this shear driven flow that we're considering here. So this strain represents deformation. Now we have that we have a way to talk about deformations, then we can talk about the rate of the deformation. And so notice that we can get a rate by just dividing gamma by the time increment delta t. So gamma over delta t, I can just take this delta t over to the left-hand side. I have gamma over delta t is v over h. And then again, we talk about small, small gamma, small delta t. And if we go to the limit of infinitesimally small quantities, this becomes a derivative, d gamma dt. Or as is conventionally written, gamma with this dot over it, or we call it gamma dot. So gamma dot represents the rate of strain or the rate of deformation. So gamma is the strain, and gamma dot is the rate of strain or the strain rate. And again, if we're talking about specifically shear driven flow, like I've shown here so far, uh, sometimes this is called the shear rate. But in general, it would be the strain rate. And notice that this quantity has units of 1 over time because we have uh, meters per second over meters is 1 over seconds. So reciprocal seconds is a typical unit that's used to express uh, rate of strain. Now, remember that we're considering a very simple kind of flow, the shearing flow. So for that special case, we can refer to gamma as the shear strain, and we can refer to gamma dot as the shear rate. So sometimes you'll see gamma dot uh, expressed as shear rate uh, instead of strain rate. And so shear rate uh, is often used because often these parameters are measured in a simple shearing geometry. Uh, so like a viscometer or a rheometer may impose a simple geometry to, to generate this kind of shearing flow. Uh, so in that case, then the, the deformation is associated with shearing. Uh, so shear rate uh, may be used to talk about gamma dot. Okay, but now let's go back to uh, where we started. Uh, our starting point was Newton's law of viscosity. And remember that for this simple flow, uh, the shearing flow, we can express the shear stress due on a surface whose normal is in the y direction due to a flow in the x direction. Uh, we can say that that's related to these velocity gradients, uh, the rate of change of the x component of velocity with respect to y. And those are related by this coefficient of viscosity. So this is kind of the fluid, fluid viewpoint. It relates these stresses to velocity gradients. We can equivalently write this as 
um, the shear stress is equal to the viscosity coefficient times the shear rate. Because remember, the change in velocity with respect to y for this simple flow is just v over h. So again, v over h, we can substitute in uh, for the velocity gradient, and that's equal to this strain rate, or this deformation rate. So the shear stress is related, in general, we can say it's related to this uh, deformation rate. And so this is kind of the materials viewpoint, where we relate stresses to rates of deformation uh, in the material.